hope we can uh, provide a little bit of news here in the middle of, of the break while things are quiet here in town. I'm uh, State Representative Mike Bell. I represent the 18th Ohio House District up in Southwest Cuyahoga County. And I'm pleased to be joined this afternoon with my colleague from Stark County, Representative Christina Hagen, as well as our Assistant Majority Whip, uh, Cheryl Grossman. And uh, I see Barb Sears is here as well, our Assistant Leader. Uh, a little over a year ago, we began to, began to examine the way Ohio encourages or perhaps discourages businesses to expand in our state, locate to our state, remain in our state, and create the jobs in our state that we need to provide opportunity for future generations of Ohioans. What we discovered is that the chief organization responsible for this, the Ohio Department of Development, had grown well beyond its original scope and mission as established under Governor Rhodes in 1963. In the military, we call this mission creep. And while often well-intentioned and legislation was enacted over the years, the process resulted in development no longer being nimble enough to engage business in a relevant and timely fashion. House Bill 1, as you know, introduced earlier this session by Representative Duffy and signed into law by the governor, began our focus on reforming government and revitalizing our ability to create an environment for job growth. House Bill 1 established Jobs Ohio, a private, nonprofit corporation designed to lead Ohio's job creation efforts by singularly focusing on attracting and retaining jobs, with an emphasis on strategic industry sectors of statewide and regional strength. The entity has taken a private sector approach, working at the speed of business and enabling Ohio to be more nimble, flexible, and competitive in its economic development efforts. In just the past year, Jobs Ohio and its partners have worked on 245 projects. These initiatives have created and retained more than 82,000 jobs, a total payroll of nearly $4.8 billion, with almost $3.3 billion in new capital investment. But there's much more that can be done to continue building on these successes. House Bill 1 tasks the Ohio Department of Development to evaluate all powers, functions, and duties of the department and to make recommendations to improve the functions and efficiency of development. Now it's time to take the next step in transforming our state for job creation. House Bill 489 will continue the process of restructuring state government to make it more efficient and effective in supporting Ohio's businesses and attracting new enterprises to our great state. It starts with recognizing the mission of the Department of Development has been reformed to actually provide services related solely to economic development which leads to its renaming as the Development Services Agency. I'll begin by talking about some components of the bill, starting Tourism Ohio, a program which I believe will become a national model for tourism marketing. Tourism is the fourth largest industry in Ohio and has great potential for additional growth. To place this in perspective, Ohio's tourism industry accounts for 439,000 jobs and $36 billion in spending every year. In 2011 alone, our state and local governments realized a 14 to 1 dollar ratio, the rate of return, from the too much fun for just one day advertising campaign. In order to set the stage for continued success in job creation, House Bill 489 establishes Tourism Ohio as a five-year pilot program designed to promote Ohio as a travel destination and encourage job creation in our state. In addition to the pilot program, the bill also establishes the Tourism Ohio Advisory Board to advise on strategies for promoting tourism in the state. And this board will be comprised of individuals who possess at least five years of executive level experience in the attractions, lodging, restaurant, transportation, or retail industry, or with a destination marketing organization. Before I turn the podium over to Representative Hagan, I wish to discuss just one further provision of House Bill 489, and that is the improvements and increased access to capital the legislation will afford minority-owned businesses in our state. Currently, the Ohio Department of Development maintains two minority-owned business funds, the Enterprise Loan Fund and the Capital Access Loan Program. Based on an analysis of previous distributions from both funds, it's possible for one of these funds to be completely depleted in a given year, with the remaining program having more funds than are needed based on the applicants who apply. House Bill 49 would permit the transfer of money between those two funds to assist more minority-owned businesses. However, during any fiscal year, the total amount of money deposited into the Capital Access Loan Program Fund from the Enterprise Loan Fund cannot exceed $3 million. Finally, the reserve requirements for each fund would have some changes as well. They'd be decreased in order to make more money available to the businesses. Current law requires that the amount equal 50% of the principal of the loan, and under the bill, the amount cannot exceed.
C as opposed to equal 50% of the principal of the loan. And for minority owned businesses, the same process applies, but the rate is 80% for each of those. At this point, Representative Hayden will address the new relationship between Jobs Ohio and DSA and reforms House Bill 489 will be making to make DSA more efficient in its tax credit and loan processing program.